There's one brand which comes to mind, which has done this um, really well, which is a new brand from London. It's called Courtiers, runs the what rules the world, and it's a private Instagram page. You know, they're, they're good to sell out instantaneously every drop and have them for the past year. And it's complete, completely anti-establishment. No hype beast coverage, no high survival, no Vogue, no GQ, no WWD. And it's, you know, the highest heat contemporary zeitgeist brand in London at the moment because he's focused solely on community consistently. And he's built a really organic, loyal following through small activations. That right there is a clip of Samuel Ross of A Cold Wall on Virgil Abloh's YouTube channel talking about Cortez and explaining how important it is to build a community behind the brand. That video is from June 16th, 2021. One year, seven months, and five days since that video will be posted. On January 17th, 2023, Clint 419 will post on his Instagram him in front of a building with the Cortez and Nike logo projected on it, hinting at a collab. In the months that would follow, Cortez went on to host pop-ups all over, from London, of course, to New York City, which I actually attended. It was pretty crazy. I actually got to meet Clint and also Bloody Dior. And lastly, Paris. Now, if you didn't know about Cortez prior to this Nike collab, you definitely know about the brand now. All this because of their community. What's good, everybody? My name is Ron, and we're back again with another YouTube video today. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing about why I think European streetwear is better than American streetwear. Now, I would like to say I don't think this applies to all brands, of course, because there are obviously bad European brands and good American ones. But I'm kind of going to be speaking in like the general perspective with also talking about some of the more popular brands in their respective market. Another thing I would like to also mention is that I'm not really going to be talking too much about Supreme or Stussy in this video because I'm kind of going to be gearing it towards the newer brands with the exception of Chrome Hearts and you'll see why. Now I could sit here and just talk about Cortez and their guerrilla marketing tactics and how it rules the world, but there's already a bunch of videos on that, although I probably will end up talking about it anyways. In this video, I want to acknowledge the other European streetwear brands that are doing their thing, like House of Errors, Years of Tears, 99 Based, and Trico. I won't do a deep dive into each of these brands, that would honestly take too long. I don't want to take away from each of these brands work, I think I might make a series for that, who knows. But I will talk about why they're so successful and what they're doing right as a collective. Although I am calling it streetwear, shout out Fully and Sid, they've done some crazy work. Now the reason why I think these brands succeed so well is because they've tapped into the roots of streetwear, something their American counterparts have completely forgotten about. Now more than ever, the lines of streetwear and luxury have gotten so blurry, but we have to look at how streetwear was before it went mainstream. The movement heavily relied on the community it was built upon, from the surfers that loved Sean Stussy's graphic and graffiti style tees, to the skaters who loved wearing Supreme because they felt it resonated with them and their community. See, what the Europeans understand is that to build a real good streetwear brand, you have to get people to feel connected and make them feel like they're a part of something bigger. That's why their guerrilla marketing tactics work so well, because of their activations. Whether it's Sid having a pop-up in Johannesburg, South Africa and getting people to come outside, to fully having a whole scavenger hunt in Epping Forest, to even Mode taking the trickle van across Europe, I'd like to state that these are also more than just pop-ups. When you see videos from these events, you see people running around and walking instead of just waiting in a line to buy a piece of clothing. These help build a deeper connection to the brands through actual moments in time and memories you won't forget where you actually went outside and participated in something. Now more than ever, with everything being online, we feel as if we've lost touch with the real world, or that's what I believe. And what these brands are doing is giving people a sense of belonging, something that humans desire most, that sense of community. Now on the other side of the spectrum, or I should say the American brands, we have Hellstar, Spider, Denim Tears, and Chrome Hearts. But for Chrome Hearts, more specifically the stuff by Maddie Boy. The reason I point these brands out is because their main way of gaining notoriety was through celebrity exposure. That's one thing all these brands have in common. Not to necessarily say that these brands are bad, but their growth can directly be linked to celebrities wearing their clothes. I have to especially point that out with Hellstar because that's their most significant way of marketing. At one point, it seemed like every influencer and celebrity in their space had it on because all they were doing was giving out free clothes to them. This even goes back to when Hellstar first began, with some of their earliest posts showing Ken Carson, Young Thug, and even Bloody Dior wearing their clothes. This also applies to Denim Tears. 
I didn't want to touch on this topic too much in this video because I think in the future I'll make a video about denim tears. But I'll say, personally, I actually like some of the stuff Tremaine Emery has dropped outside of like the cotton wreath. And I also think he has a good message too. It's just, I think the, the issue that happened with the brand was it grew so quickly to mainstream success because of all the numerous celebrities wearing his clothes. The problem that comes out of this is people develop a sheep mentality where the only reason they buy something or quote unquote like it is because they see famous people wearing it. And that leads them to not having any real attachment to the clothes and therefore not really caring about the brand either. A perfect example is when people were selling those new era hats with the cotton wreath on them. People weren't buying the hats because it was denim tears, they were buying it because it had the cotton wreath logo. This eventually led to Tremaine collaborating with New Era to drop actual hats by denim tears with the all over cotton wreath embroidery on them. Unfortunately, this is also the same case with Spider and Chrome Hearts Matty Boy. I like the stuff Matty Boy creates for Chrome Hearts, but I'll admit, I only became aware of it because I saw rappers and influencers wearing it. The craziest part about Spider is some people don't even know that it's Young Thug's brand. They just know it's popular and a lot of people wear it, which obviously there's nothing wrong with that. You could just like the design and the hoodies, but in the long run, this becomes detrimental to the brand. To really get this point across and understand the issue with celebrity exposure and quick mainstream success, we have to take a look back at history. Hood by Air, aka HBA, and v -Lone, two brands that at one point seemed like they were on top and somehow fell from grace. I won't talk too deeply into the rise and fall of both brands because that necessarily isn't what the video is about. I would suggest checking out these two videos from Thread Education. I'll link them down below. I want to address the issue with the streetwear brands I spoke about, what they're doing in correlation with what these brands also did. Hood by Air would quickly grow a mainstream audience with ASAP Rocky taking a liking to it and constantly being in HBA. The brand was already around since 2006, but this would thrust the brand to a whole different spotlight. A lot of the new supposed supporters of the brand were just ASAP Rocky's fans and they took a liking to the brand because he was wearing it. This is important to note and to remember for later on. Eventually, due to its popularity, this would lead Hood by Air to have a collaboration with the brand Bintrill. For those who don't know, Bintrill was a DJ collective consisting of Virgil Abloh, Heron Preston, Matthew Williams, Justin Saunders, and a secret member named YWP, which stood for Yeezy World Peace, and it was revealed to be Kanye later on. They would make t-shirts for their group, but the shirts got so popular that people started treating them like a brand. The problem that rose with this collaboration was Bintrill was also being sold at Paxson and HBA was now associated with it, which I think is what killed its status as a streetwear slash luxury brand. Another huge issue that came out of this was ASAP Rocky would go on to diss Hood by Air in his song Multiply, saying, HBA, shit is weak, you can keep that. Remember earlier when I said a lot of the new supposed supporters of the brand were in large part just fans of Rocky? Well, now that he didn't support the brand, obviously HBA would take a strong hit from that. This is the point that I'm trying to get across. When the celebrities stop associating with the brands or stop wearing the clothes, the brands then can't survive because they don't have a genuine community to fall back on and help them get through these times. This also largely applies to Villone. Villone quickly rose to mainstream success through it being seen on various celebrities. Although in this case, the ASAP mob had a direct connection since the owner of the brand was ASAP Bari. But this would also lead it to being rocked by Lil Uzi, Odell Beckham Jr., Playboy Cardi, and even Louis Tomlinson. As quickly as it rose, it was the same the other way around. Once these famous celebrities weren't rocking Villone anymore, the brand just saw a massive decline in its popularity. Nowadays, I doubt you'll really ever see anyone rocking the V on their back, and that's also largely due to the brand becoming an internet meme. And I know y'all know what I'm talking about, I'ma throw some memes on here just in case. I have to also mention Bari also faced some legal issues for a sexual assault that happened back in 2017, which ruined his public persona and hurt Villone in the long run. This also made a lot of the people that he was cool with disassociate themselves from him. I couldn't make this video without talking about this question, and it's because this conversation has been going on for several years now. And honestly, it deserves a video in itself, but I will talk about it in this like last portion of the video. I think what's happening over in Europe is a perfect example to use when talking about the death of streetwear. Streetwear isn't dying, it's morphing into something else with the help of several different subcultures. Streetwear now just isn't hoodies and sneakers, or also just graphics. Now more than ever, people care more about their personal style. This even goes back to my first video. Fashion is becoming more and more popular, so people are experimenting more with different clothes. But this doesn't mean you can't rock a nice pair of trousers with a graphic tee 
or maybe some sweatpants with a pair of loafers. The most beautiful part about it is that these brands that are pushing the movement forward while also honoring the heritage of what streetwear was essentially. That sense of community where you can feel a part of a brand and actually see others like you wearing the clothes from when you go outside to do stuff like running to coordinates to participating in a scavenger hunt in an actual forest. I also did want to say that this video was specifically just talking about the US and Europe, but there's streetwear brands all over the world. Like I know like especially shout out my Australians. I know um the two brands that I know about it was I think it's Meritra and Judah Tribe. I think Judah Tribe got on my radar because they had that pop up with the Central Sea and Cinna, like Melbourne. It would look pretty crazy. It was on like um undiscovered. And also, uh, what else is there? Uh, all the Asian brands. Come on, you know what I'm saying? South Asian brands too, you know, holding it down. So yeah, and yeah, it's just kind of this video was kind of just more or less talking about like America and Europe and like the comparison between the two. But obviously South America, like there's street where everywhere. I just want to kind of point that out because obviously I don't want to think like that's all, you know, like we should be limited to just Europe and the US. With that being said, I do want to say that these are all just my opinions and maybe I might be a little biased since I have my own experiences as you have yours. And if you disagree with them, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on these topics down below. I'd love to discuss them with you. If you did enjoy the video, leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and I'll be dropping more videos soon. So yeah. My name is Ron. It's been a pleasure. I'll catch you on the next one. Before we go, fit check. Uh, Supreme Reaper tee that I got in North Carolina that I thrifted. It was a hole down there, so I two-tone stitching so I didn't have red thread. Years of Tears, Ozbat Team. OG Rem Team Shorts. My old brand that doesn't exist anymore. So, yeah. Catch you on the next one. Yeah. If you're gonna, if, if constantly people's negative comments are gonna, like, stop you from doing something, and the thing is, these people, they say something online, then they go about their day. Yeah. And then sometimes you, you could see it, and then it's like, you could be it's thinking about whole, it. The whole day, and you're then it's thinking just like, about it. This yeah. person, don't, don't even, they don't really care or anything yeah. like that.